Hey everybody, Nick here, and today we got a little disassembly and maintenance to do on this guy right here. This is the Spyderco Siren. So finally, I get a chance to disassemble a waterway, right? Um, this is the uh, uh, folding version of the Spyderco waterway, effectively, uh, which is a fixed blade, which is a very, very nice fixed blade. Uh, is that a T10? That feels like a T10. That is a T10. Okay, beautiful. This is made in golden Colorado USA earth. A little bit of thread locker on there, but nothing too bad. Looks like the low strength blue stuff. This looks like a T8 though. Interesting. So, uh, looks like I'm taking the clip off as well, if I were a betting man, because it sure seems like the clip is going to be a, uh, a part and parcel of this whole thing. I won't be able to get it apart without it, at least. Yeah, because the clip screw goes all the way through there. So, that's okay. Oh, boy. That one's got a little bit of extra... Needs a little extra love. So this one feels like it's been threadlocked a little harder. For this, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use this little ratcheting set that I've got here. Um, and mind you, generally the solution to threadlocker is not torque, and there's going to be a level at which I, I call this off, so to speak, and I'll, I'll use the right tool. Use a little bit of, th um, uh, like a... Oh, okay. See, it just needed a little tiny bit more torque than the, um, just than the general driver gets me. Um, and honestly, I think it's kind of a good thing that these drivers don't allow you to put too much torque in there because it's kind of hard to hurt yourself, uh, with a driver like that. So, um, you know, you're not going to strip out screws quite as easily. But yeah, so I popped that guy loose, uh, which is good. And by the way, it looks like three different screws here. If, um, Oh, no, those are the same length. Okay, never mind. Then finally, I'll pop this guy out, and I bet... Oh, that was easy. All right. So far, so good. And I can actually go ahead and put this set away. By the way, if you're ever curious about any of the tools I'm using, including this little ratcheting set here, just go to nickshabazz.com slash tools. And I, uh, I have a video there that will just... Oh, it's going to freaking tickle your pickle or any other part of you that... Oh, actually, let's not go there, shall we? All right, back at the ranch. i am got to take this guy apart now. Okay, this part is just going to pop loose here. Okay. My goal, my hope, my fondest desire is I'm using this little spudger tool right here, and I just want to pop this guy loose. Um, my goal is not to apply a whole lot of force. It's just to apply a little bit of force over and over again. By the way, look at these pretty blue liners here. Um, this, uh, that's attractive. But my goal is to just apply a fair amount of, or a little bit of force over and over again so that I can kind of lift the blade, or uh, lift this bottom scale off of this top one. Hopefully that'll work out. But I'm a little concerned, actually, given that this you know, we have screws coming into both sides. But let's just keep trying here. Oh, yeah, there it went. See, started to separate just a little bit right there. So, good. Making progress. And I can come and I can kind of chase it. I can keep popping loose. Oh, interesting. It's want to come loose on that side, which is fine, I suppose. Um, that's not the side I took the pivot off on. But that's okay. It doesn't look like I could have taken... Oh, no, I could have taken the pivot off from the other side as well. Does the pivot come loose from both sides? Let's find out. It sure does. Okay, so maybe this is a bushing-style pivot. I'll keep those both there together. Well, the reason I just took that off is because if it's already wanting to separate along the top here, I'm going to go ahead and encourage it to do so. Um, you know, wherever this guy wants to come apart, I'll allow it to do that because uh, it doesn't really, you know... Honestly, whatever side is easiest, whatever side doesn't require a lot of weird force. Um, use the force is good, but it's not good when you're taking apart pocket knives. Okay, I can see that I'm getting a little bit of extra room here, um, the top. So, slowly but surely, we work this apart. This is a process that responds well to repeated little movement rather than a lot of heavy gronk on there. I do not need to put crazy amounts of power in this. And actually, another approach I can take is to come at it from this angle here. Um, to pop it loose up here. This has the advantage of taking the blade out of the situation, basically. Is that affecting the G10? No, that's still softer than the G10. The whole goal of these spudget tools, by the way, is such that they, uh, they, 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 they will come apart before the thing you're taking apart does. So you're unlikely to damage things with a piece of plastic. 
Um, that means that they don't have, you know, they got like a finite life, you know, so to speak. But at the same time, so do we all. And uh, we get through it. Anyways, that got dark. Let's keep on going here. And just kind of keeping working. Just trying to pop this guy loose. And like I said, I'll kind of slide that in there. Okay, good. So now I'm making some progress. I've popped that part loose as well. And I'll just kind of keep working this back and forth a little bit. And slowly but surely, I will win the, the, the battle here. Um, it's kind of fighting me up at the top here. Which makes me think there might be a little bit of thread locker holding the pivot in position. Oh, well, we're popping and we're locking. Soon enough, I'm heading to the disco here. I know that you don't pop. I don't know. Well, I know that disco's not even a thing anymore, right? The discotheque. It's one thing I've enjoyed more and more as I continue my gradual process of aging. Although, lately it's been a little less gradual. Um, but anyways, uh, it is screwing with kids by misusing language that they hold dear. You know, talking about, you know, oh, well, so what are you guys doing? Going to the discotheque or something? Like, I know that's a dead word. They know, I, I think they, they suspect I know it's a dead word. But by God, the looks on their faces when you say it, it's just like it's precious. Like I can cause them a little tiny bit of non-permanent pain by doing so. So by God, I'm going to do that. Okay, here we go. I've gone way off the rails here, but that's okay. Almost there. Yeah, it definitely looks like I've got some thread locker up in there. So maybe what I can do is kind of scrape that loose, and then I'll get back in here again. Yeah. All right, we're almost off. Just got to get this guy the rest. Of, and now at this point in time, I'll pop this open, because it looks like this area in the middle here is sort of where the, the worst of it remains, around that pin. Hopefully I can... Get this the rest of the way separated. This is not straightforward, I'm going to say. Um, like, uh, frankly, this is probably the biggest pain in the neck disassembly I've had out of Spyderco in a good while. And I, I get it. It's entirely G10, right? It's a... Maybe that's aluminum. I hope that's aluminum. <laughs> Either way. Um... Okay, we're close. We're real close here. Okay, yeah, we're very, very close. Uh, and the reason I say that is that we are... Yeah. Okay. Just got to finish working this the rest of the way out here. The pivot is... Oh, wait, hold on. Am I able to pull the blade out of here? So I am. Because I took the pivot off of both sides. Okay, good. So that's not at all how I expected any of this to go down, but it's not a bad way for it to have gone down, so to speak. And it really feels like we're binding in the stop pin area here. All right, that's not the stop pin, that's the back lock pin. Um, can I push? Yeah, I push that out. Now that might keep us from binding up front here, so I can pop this the rest of the way apart. We're slowly working this out here. Oh, yeah, great. And now that I've got the blade out of the way, then I, uh, can I use this? Eh, maybe it's not a good idea to use that. So let me just slowly but surely rotate this guy out. Whew, that's a tight little tolerance right there. I'm going to put this over here. Okay. There we go. And finally. Whew. Okay, that is just G10. All right. I can work with this. So, we have disassembled and maintained this pocket knife. Well, yeah, we've disassembled it and maintenance parts next. That was a minor pain in the neck, I'm going to be honest with you. But, hey, we'll work with it, right? Uh, okay, time to bust out nine minutes in. And slower than I expected, but hey. Um, I'm just going to clean this off with some rubbing alcohol. Look, this is factory freaking fresh. This guy was sent to me recently by the Spyderco. They are very happy to have me uh, take a look at it. It's always told them about, talk about the good, the great, the bad, the ugly. Look, you're going to hear this speech again, so I'm not going to give it again. But at the same time, it um, gives you a sense of this guy is pretty fresh off the line. 
So it's not like we really need to be doing what we're doing here, but I'll go ahead and do it anyways, because why not, right? Um, okay, so a couple of things to highlight here. There are no liners. This is just a pair of pieces of G10 from the looks of it, uh, with a very strong texture on the outside of it. Interesting. Okay. Let's pop the pivot out of the place here. No bushing or anything like that. Not that it needed one, but there's that. LC200N. You can see, by the way, that the uh, the engraving, so to speak, is done differently on LC200N. Probably because acid etching doesn't work very well. Probably because it's super stainless, right? And that's going to make acids a little out of etch. At least that's my understanding. Then again, I'm not a knife baker. I'm just a random jackass. There's always that tension in my own cognition. You know, the desire to feel like I know something about anything in the knife-making world and the, the realization that I've, you know, never made a freaking knife and probably never will. It's not my forte. But I have some knowledge now at this point after a while of doing this. Not a lot and much less than I think I do, according to my commenters. But nonetheless, it's, it's out there. Oh, interesting. So the stop pin in the back there serves to partly fix or the, uh, the the clip screw combined with those guys holds the back lock area in place. Okay, that's fine. God, this G10 is tight. Like the, the, the milling on this is just like force this freaking in. I'm going to use the desktop here to push that the rest of the way in. Uh, we are basically ready to put this guy back together. I'm going to put it back together. You could probably run this guy dry, but I'm not going to because I don't feel the need to. Um, this has a D-shape on both sides. Good. I'll put this in place, and I'm going to rebuild this from this side up. So in... Oh, wait. Hold on. Are we pinching the washer? It looks like we might be. Yeah, okay. So this is sort of a bushing-style pivot. Um... Kind of like on the PM2. So I need to make sure that I put the... Like on most knives, I would put the washer, uh, put the pivot in there, and then I would put down the washer. In this case, I can't afford to do that. Uh, well, I can't do it. It's not that I can't afford to. I can afford it just fine. I just... It doesn't freaking work. So I don't know if that's an affordance sort of issue or not. But either way. So I'll put a little bit of knife pivot lube on here. I'll probably change bottles so people see what's actually in it, right? Uh, and put a little bit here. Beautiful. All right, let's go ahead and pop this onto this pin here. Good. All right. Now, here comes the fun part. Uh, let me go ahead and before I go too much further, let me go ahead and put the pivot in on the other side there. Just that way I've got at least one degree of freedom reduced, you know? Pop this in place. There you go. Screw that down. All right. So now that's not going anywhere. Next step is going to be to rebuild the rest of the damn thing. Um, I don't want to remove these. The, the problem is having two pins on one side, one pin on the other, just makes this whole process super freaking awkward. Especially when I'm trying to rebuild it from the side that... Uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to put it back together like this, because this these two will precisely locate this backspacer. This one will not. It'll want to rotate around there. So I'm not going to worry about those for the moment. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to install the blade. Great. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put the washer in position here, uh, because I want that to be, well, in position, right? Rotate, rotate. Now, what am I forgetting? I am not forgetting anything. I eh, probably am, let's be real here. But I'll just sort of try and push this whole thing down top to bottom. Oh, oh, there's my issue. When I do it this way, check this out. The spring for the back lock is uh, on top of the... Uh... <laughs> the spring for the back lock is right on top of this guy. So what I need to do then is not what I did there. Uh, what I need to do then is actually put this backspace a piece on first. The downside to this, of course, is that right now this is, it's not going to go into place until this is under tension, right? How do I make this a thing? What if I put it like this? 
Yeah, that way the blade is out of play at least. Now I'll do this. Yeah, okay, here's what I'm going to do. And let me talk you through this conceptually. I have two holes right here. Well, two posts, and I have two holes right here. What I'm going to want to do is I'm going to insert these two posts in an orientation that I know is incorrect, right? I, I can put these guys in place, and I know that this is not how this lines up. There's a big gap here. However, I can use these scales effectively as a leverage tool to pop everything, to put the tension onto that spring there, and then... I should be able to pinch everything else the rest of the way in place. There we go. Perfect. Hey, I made that look good. And I don't usually make things look good. I'm going to be honest with you here. All right. Um, so that was a little bit of a pain, but if I've done it right, we are almost done. And that's good. All right. And put the back spring in there. By the way, that was a neat little trick I did where you hold, when you get these wire clips, you hold the screw using the clip itself. That way it stays in the right orientation as you drop it in there. Because trying to drop the screw through the top part, but not through the bottom part, that sucks. I'm just going to be real. That just, every part of that is just awful. So I'd rather not do it, you know? All right. Put this in place. I'm not putting these too tight yet. There we go. Just very basic hand tight. You never want to put too much torque on anything. And by the way, you saw earlier, I was trying to pinch this guy back together. It was giving me some resistance, so I stopped and I looked. That's an important thing that you can do. I mean, this is probably obvious to people who put anything, you know, take things apart on any regularity. If it, you know, it requires a lot of force, you got to be careful, right? Because unless that's the intended approach, you might break something. Not like on you, likely, but on it. Okay, so this is still a little loose. So what I'm suspecting is going on here is just that... Yeah, I'm just seating this right there. Seating that well. Okay, so where are we at? No play. Reasonably smooth action. That's nice. Where's our tightness? Okay, I'm wondering if I can run this a little looser. So loosen, just a little, loosen, just a little. Well, it now drops shut, but there's a little bit of play. So let's tighten this up a little bit. Just the slightest little turns and twists I'm doing here. So there is a little tiny unsharpened space that if I put my finger there, it's kind of scary, I'm going to be honest with you, but I... Yeah, and then I can come back around here and twist the rest away. Do we have any play? That's the question. No play. And a nice drop shot of dude for one-handed closing. Okay. Good Lord, though, this... Uh... The G10 here is pretty aggro. Like, I feel like this G10 is going to shake me down for money or something. But then again, it's an outdoorsing water knife, so that's kind of probably by design. So is the G10 on the waterway, for that matter. Anyways, um, there you go. We have disassembled and maintained the Spyderco Siren. I uh, hope this was interesting, that you enjoyed the Siren's song here today, and that you have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.